Russell Leidek here. I'm going to show you how to do some interesting approximate binary searches with Agnentro Find, which comes with the Agnentro Toolkit. So I've just downloaded it into the Agnentro folder. And uh, you can do the same on uh, Linux, Linux, Mac, or Windows. Uh, all those the examples here are just uh, uh, specific to Linux, but the syntax is the same uh, for all those platforms. So we just start out with make Agnentro Find and that'll build the utility and put it in the temp directory. You can, of course, relocate it to wherever you see fit. Um, and uh, so if I just run it with no parameters, then I'll get all the syntax. And so I'd encourage you to do that because later you can go back and you can see all the little bells and whistles that it has and the, the features that you can utilize. Um, but I'm going to try to give you a few quick techniques for getting you off the ground fast. Um, so let's say, for sake of argument, we have a look at uh, user the user bin folder. Um, so on all Unix distributions, this is a place where there are useful utilities, uh, sort of system level utilities. Um, so let's say, for example, that uh, you saw this zip application. So this, of course, is the utility that compresses and decompresses archives. Um, but let's say you had no idea what this was and you wanted to know, is it similar to anything I've seen before? Well, um, Ignentro Find could help, help you with that. So we could run temp slash Ignentro Find. Uh, and we always look for a needle in a haystack. So the needle is going to be user bin zip. And the haystack is going to be slash user slash bin. It could be the whole hard drive, but I don't have that much time. Um, I'm going to put a zero here because we're going to do a byte granular search. You don't need to worry too much about that at the moment. But basically, with Ignentro Find, um, you can have a granularity of one, two, three, or four bytes. So this is one byte. I'm going to put an H for haystack mode. And what haystack mode means is that, uh, in technical terms, the sweep is equal to the size of the haystack. And if that doesn't make any sense, uh, then you can read the white paper that's posted on my blog page. Uh, but basically, uh, basically what it means is it's going to do a statistical profile of the zip application in this case. And it's going to compare that statistical profile, that byte histogram, if you want to think of it that way, to every other byte histogram in the user bin directory. Uh, and then it's going to sort the results uh, basically descending by entropy distance, so information distance. So I don't know, let's take you know, top nine results. And there we go. OK, so of course, the top result is zip itself. That's unsurprising because uh, zip is obviously very close to zip. Um, and I suppose for numerical stability reasons, it's possible that that wouldn't be in the top slot. But in any event, you should certainly see the file itself uh, pretty close to the top. And, and then there's these other files that uh, I think even a human uh, who didn't know much about the situation would, would probably conclude had something to do with zip because they're named appropriately, right? Zip note, zip split, zip cloak, char, wait, what is char? And char. Oh, char creates shell archives or char files, which are in text and text format and can be emailed. These files can be unpacked later. Oh, okay, so there's there's some kind of archiving uh, stuff going on with char. So it may be that it shares similar help text or similar function names or variable names or even similar machine code to zip. So if they were compiled by, let's say, different versions of GCC, uh, the machine code might be relatively the same uh, in certain functions, uh, certain common functions that it shares with zip. I, I don't know. Uh, but these would all be uh, viable explanations for why that ended up in the hits. Um, and then we see zip info and un unzip. That seems to make sense. And then there's this other stuff, and I don't know what V40L2 is or whatever. Um, but basically, as you get toward toward the bottom of the list, the results start to deteriorate because the entropy distance uh, sort of gets larger and larger. So um, what happened to, like, for example, zip details? I don't see zip details up there. Well, it could be that even though this is conceptually related to zip, its byte histogram is just not all that close to it. Um, it could be, for instance, that maybe it shares maybe it shares a couple of common functions or uh, variable names or whatnot, but it's just basically that it's a case where the statistics are overwhelmed by other more significant differences. So, you know, mileage may vary, and you have to basically tweak your techniques a little bit sometimes, but at least you have a big crude hammer that you can throw at problems now where you're trying to find out what's related to what and uh, what's the information distance between them. I mean, you know, I could even imagine this being used in biology, for instance, to find, you know, which species of bacteria are, which are, are related more closely to which others and that kind of thing. I'm sure you can think of a billion problems where uh, this kind of tool might be useful. All right, but um, we can we can also uh, dig into this uh, zip application. So let's say we, we sort of know that it has something to do with compression now because it's related to all these other things, but 
we want to see exactly uh, what's going on with the machine code. So we do this Linux specific thing, which is object dump, which is going to give us basically all the machine code in the assembly language um, inside zip. And um, let, let's say for sake of argument, we just wanted to search uh, for an exact match of a particular text string. So I'm just, I'm just going to look at the top here. Oops. Um, so E8, 8D, this stuff. So, so let's, let's just first of all just do an exact match for that hex value. So uh, instead of a file name, I put plus for hexadecimal. So I'm going to search for E8, 8D, DF, uh, FD, FF, 4885, ED. If I type that right, uh, and that's going to be look in user bin zip. And uh, we'll still do byte granular, but now I'm going to put E for exact match. And I don't know, top nine matches. Ah, okay, so there's only one match and it's uh, 23 E7E. Now that's, that's all great, except that the problem is um, if you look at these addresses from the obj dump, they don't match. Why? Well, because the obj dump, obj dump addresses are sort of linker adjusted. Um, this address, the 23 E7E that uh, temp Ignentrofine just put out, that's actually a zero based address relative to the base of the file. Um, so, so that's what's going on there. Um, but okay, let, let's say that for whatever reason you expected to find a 55 here. Um, maybe maybe you have some. Maybe you looked at some similar files and you decide, okay, well, more than likely this string is going to occur. So let's do an exact match. Oh, it's not there, right? So what are you going to do? Well, <laughs> conventionally you're sort of out of luck. But with Ignentrofind, you can do a needle-based search, and uh, the needle uh, needle mode search. Excuse me. Um, just basically takes a sliding window of your hex bytes you're looking for and moves them over the whole file as it were just like like a sort of like a slide rule and then it just does statistical comparisons um, with a data set uh, a, a, a what I call a sweep window inside inside the haystack which in this case is user bin zip and that sweep window in needle mode is going to have the exact same size as the needle so if you actually run that it will find uh, you can see 20 23E7E, it turns out to be the second rank. But what's all this other stuff around it that's very close to it? Um, and there's a couple of different ones down here. Um, well, what that means is, so we just did an approximate search. So, so these values are basically div compressivity values, which essentially you can think of them as measuring entropy distance. So the closer to one, the closer they actually are. All right. Um, and, and so what happens is when we're sliding this window uh, basically through the haystack, if, if you just move by like one byte, um, then the entropy is not going to change very much. So you get a whole bunch of these uh, nearby hits that are basically reflecting the same phenomenon in the haystack. So there is a filtration for that. Uh, we can actually put a set bit zero of the format byte. So this little byte is the format byte. It's a hexadecimal number, but I'm just going to put one <laughs> for filtration. And you can see all this redundant stuff goes away and we're just left with you know, pretty different cases. And different means that, that they don't overlap at all. So so they're they're farther away from each other than the length of the needle in this case. And by the way, if, if we wanted to, for some weird reason, we could choose like a, I don't know, 17 byte uh, sweep. Okay, so, so then of course the answer is different because it changes the statistics. But so in needle mode, the sweep uh, is the size of the needle. Uh, in haystack mode, it's the size of the entire haystack, which means the sliding window doesn't slide. Um, and, and then you can have a, a fixed size sweep mode where you just choose whatever you want. But it's rare that you would have a fixed size uh, sweep mode. Um, so we can also do text searches. Um, let's search for a text. Uh, I say, oh, I know, alloc, allocation. It must probably be in there, right? Um, so the at sign just means uh, I want to search for text. We're going to look for user bin zip. Uh, let's just look for exact matches and uh, consolidate them because we don't want multiple reporting. And so there we go. Okay, so it can also do text searches. Um, but let's say I want to see the hexadecimal bytes uh, around those places. I can actually dump, don't worry about the zero for the moment. Let's, let's, let's say uh, we want to dump 15 bytes at each of these locations. I put a plus and I get the hexadecimal. Or if I put an at sign, I get the text. Okay, so uh, we can also do a case insensitive search. So if I if I had the wrong case here, I can just put I for case insensitive, and I get exactly the same result. Now back to that zero. Um, let's say we want to offset ourselves by ten bytes to the left. Maybe we add another ten bytes to the uh, dump size, and now you see the word alloc goes to the middle of of the uh, dump data. Um, 
Now, the, one of the coolest things about all this is that uh, it doesn't matter whether you do an approximate search or an exact search or case insensitive in haystack mode or needle mode or, or fixed mode. It doesn't matter. Um, you can still dump all the data uh, at the end of the search, but, but you can only dump it if the haystack is a file. If the haystack is a folder, um, it will just basically give you um, a relative ranking. And the relative ranking is based on um, the best score within that file. Um, okay, so we can, by the way, dump all of these results um, to disk. And the way you do that is instead of putting at or plus, you put, let's say, file, whatever you want, dot, uh, I guess, bin in this case. Oh, and maybe we want to dump it into the temp directory so we don't make a mess. And, and then it just shows us the offsets. So you can see all these offsets displayed, like one, two, what is it, two, two, four, four, six, two, okay. So we got two, four, four, six, two here, right? They're all exactly the same as in the previous uh, case. Um, but so it means, hopefully, that we've dumped all of this stuff to temp. So let's, let's have a look at what it actually generated. So as you can see, all of these are 25 byte files, okay? And these are these are exactly the same, or should be the same, as the dump strings we found up here. So let's let's look at this one. Put care realloc to upper. So that's 10ee. So this file should contain that result. So let's have a look in there. So cat temp slash file 10ee. Ah, paste. Okay. And there it is. Uh, put care realloc to upper, whatever that is. All right, so that, that's what the uh, that's how we save matches. So this can be really useful. For example, um, let's say that uh, you have a USB stick with a whole bunch of JPEG files on it, and you know they're, they're your family vacation photos, and all of a sudden you accidentally delete all of them. Well, if you took an image of that uh, of that particular USB stick, like using DD or some some disk image utility, and then you went and searched that image for the uh, signature bytes of a JPEG header. Um, then you could specify a dump size, let's say of you know I don't know 10 megs, and that would pretty much almost surely cover you for just about any photo, um, and and then you could recover all of your photos. Now of course if you did that, you'd end up dumping more than you actually needed. Uh, so there's some potential potential security issues there. So you want to want to make sure that you optimize down uh, back down to what the actual file length is. But you could do you know a binary search process and figure that out. But look, the bottom line is um, this allows you to just uh, find approximate matches uh, in text or text or hexadecimal and, uh, and basically dump them to disk. Um, and uh, I hope that gives you some good ideas of how to use IgnentroFind. So go, don't delay, go grab a copy and uh, fool with it yourself and see what you can do. Thanks for listening.